Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today's lesson will be bar lines and measures. So we just explored our staffs in the last lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be creating bar lines and measures and visually dividing up the staff so that we can eventually put notes in there and create some songs. Okay, so bar lines are exactly what the word is, a line that separates bars. So this is a bar or a measure, but I want to talk more about where the bar line begins and ends. It begins at the very top of the top staff and goes down. So if you've like if you're not really familiar with music, looking at music and you remember seeing like everything divided up into squares, that's all it is. Remember how the staff only has five lines? One, two, three, four, five and four spaces. The measure is a way for us to divide this space up so that we can think of the music in smaller terms. Let's draw a staff up here and let's draw some notes, which we haven't done that yet, but I'm going to draw some for you. And let's draw them without any bar lines and see what happens. So it's like there's a lot going on and you're sort of like confronted with like all of this. There's a lot happening there. When we add the bar lines, it's really nothing that you can play on the piano. It's just a way to help your eyes divide what you're looking at. So you can a very common time signature, we'll explore that later, is four beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So bar lines divide each measure, one measure from another. So sometimes we'll have three beats in a measure, sometimes two, sometimes four. Whatever the amount, you will have two beats. So here's two beats, two beats. That's the maximum amount of beats that can be in each measure. Those are bar lines. Okay, and the measure is what's inside of the bar line. So let's make some big measures. Okay, and a really, really common time signature is 4-4. Four, four. So we're, we haven't learned that yet, don't worry, we'll get there. But to provide an example of what the measure really does, I'm going to establish a time signature so we know about this rule. There's a rule that there can only be four beats in every measure. So. We are going to learn about notation. This is a whole note. And don't worry, you'll learn this later. This is four counts. One, two, three, four. Four beats. One, two, three, four. Four counts. Okay. Inside the measure, we have our notes. Now, we already learned on the grand staff, when you have the treble clef and the bass clef joined together by this brace, that means that when you have notes that are vertically in line, you play them together at the same time. So here, as you remember from our treble clef lesson, this will count our spaces, F, A, C, this is a C. And if we want to come to that answer by using the lines, we use every good boy. Okay, that space is above the line boy C, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. So that is a C. Let's take the bass clef. Okay, good boys do G, A, B, C, D, E. This is an E. Okay, the next note looks like it's the same, and this is also the same. Okay, so in the measure, our notes, our, they're, they're a little bit, to the right of the first bar line and a little bit to the left of the second bar line. If we had them like this and we had all the space at the end of the measure, that would be really, really uneven and weird and anyone playing this would be like, what am I supposed to do with the rest of the space? So this is not what we do. We try to make everything as equidistant as possible. So I'm going to play that. I'm going to play this example. So let's go back to the first measure and that note is floating in the second space from the bottom space. Counting our lines, the bottom line is E, the space is F, 
the next line is G, that space is A. The base clef, the bottom line is G, the next space is A, the next line is B, the next space is C. So in the bass clef, we have a C. In the treble clef, we have an A. Okay, that is what the first measure sounds like. Two, three, four. We have whole notes, we'll learn about those later, but for now, they're worth four counts. Okay, the next measure, we move. Your left hand, or bass clef, now has an E, and your right hand now has a C. We now have half notes, which we will explore later. For now, just accept the fact that they are each worth two counts. We're playing them at the same time because visually they appear on the staff to us, one above the other.